All right, the 2021 Audi A5 convertible, and this is the kind of base model premium trim level, just so you know. And I believe it has one other option fitted to it, like the convenience package, which gives you some niceties like the heated steering wheel and a few other things, but we'll get into that. All right, so as you can see from the title, this is a excellent vehicle. In fact, one I would personally consider in its class except it has one big problem, and I will talk about that as we kind of go through this drive here. So don't worry, it's not a problem that can't be fixed, but again, it's something I have to go into. So if you're some type of fanboy or fangirl, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're, you're trying to defend this thing, just know that I don't hate this vehicle. It's just some objective things I need to cover here because I do these reviews for people that are actually in the car market who actually are thinking about either leasing it, buying it outright, whatever. Whatever their situation is, they're actually in the buying market. That's who I do these videos for, not as some commercial to make people happy, all right? That's not what this is. So let's talk about it. The A5, it's kind of built on the A4 platform okay it's kind of the stylish coupe slash convertible variant however you can also get a four-door version of the a5 with the sport back rear and that's cool however unfortunately for 2021s and up i can't really recommend that because it makes less horsepower but the a5 has always been a nice stylish vehicle it continues to look amazing till this day it's a great design it ages gracefully you can pull up in this 10 years from now and it will still look great and I'll talk about the differences between the convertible and the coupe here uh, in this driving segment. So leave your thoughts in the comment section below on your thoughts on the, on the way that this vehicle looks. Do you like it more compared to the C300 convertible or even the new BMW 4 Series convertibles? Uh, let me know your thoughts, but let's go ahead. Let's transition over into this drive now. All right, we have here a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine producing 261 horsepower and 273 pounds feet of torque. I recently did a review on the 2021 Audi A6 and I'll be honest, this feels much quicker than that A6 does. It could be for a variety of reasons like um, the previous owner, the previous person who drove the A6 probably used like regular fuel in that thing, you know, something like that. So it didn't feel quite as smooth or as potent, but this feels great. I really like the way that this engine feels, not just in the city or anything like that. I drove this thing for hundreds of miles on the highway as well. And most four cylinder turbocharged engines, they fall flat on the highway, like past 80 miles an hour, but this one keeps pulling. So I really appreciate that. And I mentioned the, the four-door A5 there with the sport back. That four-cylinder makes less power. It only makes 201 horsepower. So if you're going to get a A5, I would definitely either get the coupe or the convertible. My preference would be the, the coupe because it'll actually weigh 300 pounds less as well. That's another advantage. And yeah, very brisk acceleration. I think zero to 60 is 5.3 seconds according to Audi for the A5 coupes and the convertibles, but yeah, the coupe is gonna be a little bit more practical than this, a little bit bigger of a trunk, and it's gonna weigh around 3,700 pounds. This weighs about 4,000 pounds. Quattro all-wheel drive is standard, which is a great thing. And because this is kind of the, the premium model, kind of the base model of this convertible, we have here 18 inch wheels wrapped in 245 wide Continental Pro Contact tires. Great tires and these 18s look amazing on this vehicle, but unfortunately for 2022 and up, you don't get these 18 inch wheels. You have another set of 18s that you can choose from, but I really like the kind of multi-spoke kind of interesting design that this thing has going on. But uh, obviously though, if you're interested in this review, you're probably thinking about getting a convertible. It's something you've always dreamed of or you've always owned convertibles. And this is another one that you're trying to uh, compare and contrast with in the in this segment so yeah go ahead and get your convertible if that's what you want but you're going to be paying around six thousand dollars more over the coupe to get this privilege to put the top down 
And, uh, you know, here's the thing with convertibles. I mean, they kind of lose their luster after a while, especially with vehicles like this. This is kind of a more comfy cruiser convertible, okay? It's not like a hardcore sports car or anything like that. I think most people know. Uh, the S5 would be amazing. I, I think that would be a really nice choice in the in this lineup. But the A5 is great because of the real-world fuel economy. But, again, there, that's something I have to address a little bit later. Yeah, the convertible is going to cost six grand more. I would personally rather put that six grand towards the coupe and get the, either the premium plus or the prestige model of that for like around 55 grand. Maybe try and get that bang and alls and sound system. And uh, you get things like the LED headlights, right? This vehicle does not have the nice looking LED lights. It's kind of the more basic headlight, which kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. This, this vehicle really does need the fancier headlight array. The rear taillights do look good, though, so that's, that's decent. But driving dynamic-wise, you're not really sacrificing here by going with the convertible because I've driven a 2019, I believe, uh, or a 2018 A5, and I really like the way that thing handled. It was a coupe, and this handles very similarly, so that's not really the issue here, okay? Despite the uh, extra weight that this thing is lugging around. Now, keep in mind, for six to seven tenths driving, this is excellent, okay? It's really planted, really comfortable. I did some high-speed maneuvers out on the highway, really stable. And obviously with that Quattro all-wheel drive system, you have plenty of grip. Uh, the chassis doesn't roll about too much at all. It's a really composed vehicle. I prefer this a lot more to that A6 I drove. It just feels a lot more nimble. I like the more low-slung nature of this. It's not too low-slung, but it's enough. And uh, it just has a great balance and poise to it out of the road. But when you start doing eight, nine tenths driving, that's when you notice the kind of understeer and the plowing nature that this thing kind of starts to exhibit so that's something to keep in mind but as a whole this is a great driving experience this is a quality machine in terms of the way it handles and drives i i really respect that some might argue that the the steering feels numb whatever that means i i think the steering is direct it gets the job done and it's easy to whip around easy to place on the road great uh seating position as well so all great things there love the way the a5s drive in, in fact again as I mentioned earlier on in the review, this is kind of my preference between the C300 Benz and even the 4 Series, I think. Especially the new one kind of looks weird, right, with that big grill. The C-Class's four-cylinder engine is nowhere near as smooth as this. Uh, it's pretty quick, but this is quick and smoother, so that's why I like this. The ride quality is sublime, super comfortable, especially with these 18-inch wheels. It's really quiet as well, so if you're thinking about going with the convertible, rest assured that it's still a very quiet experience not a whole lot of tire noise not a whole lot of wind noise it's really well composed even on the highway i've driven this thing out on the highway with the top down at 80 plus miles an hour it's still pretty smooth in here just keep the uh all four windows up and it's you can drive this thing with the top down all day long top up it's what you would expect out of an audi quiet smooth refined but you know if i'm gonna go with the convertible uh, it kind of has to be more of a a sporty experience right like a naturally aspirated v8 or something like that because uh, that's where a cabriolet really comes to life when you can hear a proper engine and all that stuff when it enhances the driving experience in my opinion the the cabriolet in this doesn't really enhance what the a5 is trying to do is kind of my point but again if that's what you want i'm assuming you have money if you're shopping in this segment uh, so if you have cash go ahead get your cabriolet if that's what you want the convertible top and obviously it is a soft top here, so make sure to park it in the garage unless uh, you want bird droppings all over it. But okay, other things to mention before we talk about the interior. I mentioned the fuel economy is amazing. In the real world, this gets unbelievable gas mileage. So here's the thing with that. You have to be driving in the normal mode. I think this is rated to get like 23 in the city, 32 I believe on the highway or 31 on the highway, something like that. This will actually outdo the EPA numbers. You will be getting way better fuel economy than that. When I was driving on the highway, it was around 100 miles. I was driving on average between 85 to 90 miles an hour. I was still getting like 34 MPG. So that's amazing. I mean, I was doing some hard, hard driving, really passing people and all that stuff. Even in the city, I was getting like 24, 25. But again, that's with the comfort mode. And there is a 
and this is where the title comes in, there is one big problem with driving the A5. So if you're at a standstill, if you're at like a stoplight or trying to make like a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn, if you have the, <laughs> if you're in comfort mode with the stop-start technology turned on and you have the traction control turned on as well, there is an unbelievable amount of lag when you initially get off the line. I mean, to the point where it's dangerous. It's genuinely dangerous. There's like a two or even a three second delay before you can actually get up off the line. And then all the boost kind of comes on and I hate that. It's the worst feeling ever. I've been caught flat footed twice in this thing when I was trying to pull out in front of someone and I thought I had the power and the torque to do it, but I forgot that the stop start was on and it took like literally a minute, <laughs> definitely a second or two for the engine to kick back in and for the turbo boost to be uh, spooled up. So here's the thing, here's what you have to do to alleviate that issue, okay? Because you can't get rid of that problem. Every time you get into this vehicle for the first time, you have to make sure to turn off that auto stop start, turn off the traction control. You can probably leave the traction on, but it's a quattro all wheel drive Audi. I mean, grip is really not this thing's problem. And when you do start running out of grip due to the tires or whatever, if you're driving too hard, this thing is just gonna understeer anyway. So it's a very safe car to drive, no problems. But every time you drive this car, you just wanna make sure that you have the muscle memory in you to actually go through, turn off those two things, and then put the vehicle into its dynamic setting. Just part this bad boy here. And I think when you go with the premium pluses and up, you will also get a 360 degree camera, which I'll talk more about in the interior segment. But anyway, you do those two things and then you have to make sure to put the vehicle into the dynamic setting. So the vehicle, even after you turn off the car, it'll remember your drive selection. Uh, like if you put it in the auto mode or the dynamic mode or the individual mode, and you can use the paddles if you want to. It's cool. It reacts pretty well. This is a good seven speed automatic transmission, the S-Tronic. I have no qualms with that. It reacts really well with the paddles or in the automatic mode, that's fine. To alleviate kind of the lag that this thing experiences, because there's still that turbo lag associated with this car, you have to be in that S mode for the transmission and the dynamic mode for its drivetrain. So it reacts as quickly as possible. Now you have a quick car that's always ready to go, that's not gonna lag or stall behind or anything like that. You can pull out in front of people without any issues, but now your fuel economy tanks. Like now I'm getting not 25 in the city, I'm getting more like, you know, 17, 18 in the city. And uh, the highway MPG is also gonna suffer. So that's something to keep in mind there. I mean, if you're leasing this car, you're most likely not somebody that drives a lot anyway, so it doesn't really matter about the fuel economy too much, but you are putting premium in here. Keep that in mind. And when you drive it like that in the settings I mentioned, then you'll have no issues with it. It's a comfortable, quick car, quiet, great interior, all that good stuff. So that's it. That's how you fix the major problem with this. If you're an Audi freak and you hate what I just said, well, too bad for you, okay? This is the facts. This is my experience with the car. But otherwise, I mean, once you do the things I told you to do, it's great. I just wish that the car would remember these settings every time you got in and out of it, okay? At least the auto stop start, right? Because uh, BMWs, they will remember if you turn off the auto stop start or not. But anyway, that's my detailed look on driving the A5. Let's go ahead and let's transition over into the interior segment now. So let's quickly, let's talk about the interior segment. This interior is another reason why I prefer this A5 over the rest of the competition, okay? Because a C-Class cannot compete with this level of interior solidity. I realize that this has the previous generation kind of Audi, MMI, whatever you call this, infotainment system. Uh, however, I prefer this. But most importantly, the solidity of the cabin. There are no creaks, there are no rattles. This car has about 7,400 miles on it, this little test car here. I really like the way everything is laid out. It's logical, it's ergonomic, it's easy to access, and it just, nothing moves or shakes or jiggles or anything like that. That's kind of where this outdoes Mercedes and BMW, in my opinion. And you combine that with the super smooth four cylinder engine, the quick power, the beautiful ride quality, because this does utilize multi-link suspension, both in the front and the rear. So a superior suspension technology 
two Mercedes and the equivalent 4 Series because they use strut based suspension in the front. Uh, something I failed to mention in the driving segment. Also, the brakes are a little spongy in this. That's the only thing. The braking feel could be a little bit better in here. That's the only other driving thing I forgot to mention. But otherwise, everything else, great. And I still prefer this uh, over the other two cars. And this interior kind of just seals the deal for me. So let's talk about this infotainment. As I mentioned when I was backing the car up, you can get a 360 degree camera, at least in the 2022 model years, when you option it with the Premium Plus package and up. But I love this infotainment, it's easy to use, it's a touch screen, no problems, it's quick to respond. And this does have Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay, but no Android Auto, something to keep in mind there. This is not like the Audi A6 that I featured on the channel with the dual screen thing. Again, I like this because it gives you the physical knobs and buttons for the climate control. So if you're interested in that, the 2021, 2022 might be the last few years for the A5 to use this kind of older generation, easier to use ergonomic screen with the physical climate control buttons. You have heated seats here as well. No cooled seats. Uh, that's gonna be an option. And you do have a physical volume knob here, uh, which is great, but you also have that on the steering wheel as well because this is the, the convenience package 2021 model. You have a heated steering wheel here. Gauge cluster, um, it has a physical tachometer and a, and a speedometer, but you also have this helper screen, which is very useful, easy to use as well. Everything about this is really easy to access. You got your push button start down there. You have two cup holders in the middle with a nice little cubby space here and you also have a usb slot digital shifter your buttons to access the the top the convertible top here to put it up and down one touch automatic windows for all four windows this is not double pane glass but it doesn't really need it because the car is so quiet you have automatic headlights and the memory seat function here as well in the door because this has a convenience package so you get the two-way memory seats for the front driver's seat but the passenger seat is also electric which is very convenient the seat comfort is excellent. I have no problems with it. You have some lumbar support here and it uh, gets the job done. It's a comfortable seat, no problems. You can certainly do a long journey in this. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about the rear seats because the rear seats might look pathetic uh, on camera, but I can actually fit behind myself. I am five foot 11. I can get in and out of this car rather easily. That's the, that's a good thing about something like this, like a C300 convertible or like an A5 convertible. These things aren't super low slung like a Corvette. And even accessing the rear seats, once you kind of you know flip this front seat over a little bit, uh, you can just stand up and then sit down. If you're not like a seven foot driver in the front, you can certainly put people in the back. So that's useful. And you have your own climate control in the back. You know, this is a convertible. So you can certainly have fun with, with four people in this car. That's not really an issue, but I will say the, the trunk space is limited, okay? Because this is the convertible. That's what I'm saying. The coupe would have been a little bit more practical. You can probably put more things in there because the rear seats will fold down for the coupe and the convertible 50-50, so that's convenient. And you can stow some longer things like golf clubs and all those things. But uh, with this, with the convertible top, you will actually be sacrificing some of that space back there. And let's see, is there anything else I missed here for the interior segment? You have some safety features like blind spot monitoring, which is nice to see. The audio system in this, I don't know what it is, but it sounds decent in here. It's not bad. It gets the job done, but I would definitely try and get the Bang Nolves in if possible. That's the only other thing. But yeah, as a whole, dude, let's wrap everything up here. Great car. Definitely one to consider, especially if you like this interior, the simplistic infotainment, the great four cylinder, the smoothness, the power that it offers, the thrust, great comfort. It's quiet. Uh, the coupe would be even better because it's going to be even more solid and it's going to weigh a little bit less. So slightly more dynamic car, but this is also great as well in terms of driving. It's not sloppy and all over the place. You know, this is very similar in terms of handling compared to the coupe. So it's a relatively no compromise car. As long as you do the things that I told you to do with the drivetrain, turn off the auto stop start, turn off the traction. You don't need that with the Quattro all wheel drive system. You have plenty of grip and uh, put the vehicle in its sportiest setting. You'll have no issues pulling out in traffic. You'll always have power on tap. You're going to sacrifice on fuel economy, but it's a sacrifice worth making with this car. It'll give you that luxury car experience that you want. And it's a non fatiguing car to drive. Okay. I've spent a lot of time with it, a lot of miles with it, and I really enjoyed it. And hopefully you enjoyed this review as well. And if you did, 
I just want to let you know this is another card that I got from Dryflow, which is a subscription program that I pay for monthly. So that's how I've been getting some of these you know, newer European cars to feature on this channel because Audis are pretty hard for journalists to come across. Even with nearly 50,000 subscribers, Audis are pretty difficult to get in my area. So with the Dryflow program, I've been able to get cars like this so if you want to check out the dry flow program i will leave that in the description box below i'm located in north carolina and that's where they run their business and uh, if you want to support me on patreon you can but anyway that's how i got the car hopefully you found value with this review thanks again for watching take care and goodbye